The Youthscape Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Youthscape Podcast. And it's a very special edition uh, with me, Martin Saunders. And with me, Rachel Gardner. And uh, you can listen to this podcast, but you can also watch mm, this podcast. Yeah. So we're going to be doing a few of uh, these in the, in the next few weeks. Uh, and this is the first one. So uh, you can actually go on to YouTube. Uh, and if you search for Youthscape on there, you'll be able to find uh, this as a video. Or you may have done that and you're now watching me tell you how to find the very thing that you've just found. <laughs> which feels a bit redundant. Which feels a bit patronising, Yeah, it is it? a little bit. Yeah. It's so good to welcome you. And if you're not watching it, you're just listening. Because that is that is your mode of transport. Because actually, maybe you've never seen our faces. And in your mind, you've created an idea of who we are and what we look we're like. We're better looking in your we're, mind. Yeah, everything's always better in your mind, isn't it? Yeah. So stay there. Stay in that domain. That's absolutely fine. And we welcome you too. Martin, how are you? Welcome to Youthscape Podcast. I'm well, thank you. Good. I'm well. Um, you look very fit. Well, I'm, I'm glad you. I said that. I'm glad and weirded out that you said that. Well, you're my friend. I noticed these. You things. look really fit. You look really fit. Very Thanks. Um, Emotionally, spiritually, <laughs> or in all the ways. Financially, I don't have no idea. I'm so I said to fit. you, let's let, just to take the fourth wall away from you. <laughs> I said, Rachel, just say something about in our fitness. planning meeting. Say something to me about fitness on this one. I and so you went with yes you, you look, look fit. very fit what, what else am i going to say the plant looks fit let's talk about fit hey, no come on you let's just land said, it. hey still the start of the new year hey okay let's do a lot again. of people are thinking about fitness hey still the start of the new year yeah. hey do you go to the gym because you're looking fit no <laughs> it's not that it's not that it's not the it? angle that isn't the way it is okay it? never mind what I, what i was going to talk about <laughs> What I was going to talk about was, very, I'm very proud of something. Um, and I should set a little bit of the scene. Uh, also uh, in the room today, behind the camera, we have uh, direct, we have producer Amy, but we also have director James, yeah. who's with us. Ooh, there he is. There's, there's his, his hand, hand. His mighty yeah. hand. Uh, unless you're listening, in which case, that was nothing at all. Uh, and then we also have assistant director Ooh. Matt. Yes. We Say hello, love Matt. You, Matt. <laughs> he's over there. He's not committed totally. Is to that, that supposed to be here, or is he just sat there watching? No, no, he's the other camera. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Sorry. Okay. This is like a high-level production. Sorry, he's coming to watch us at, at work. We've got I'm two cameras. Like, I've got nothing else to do. I'll just go and watch I'm, those two I'm crash. Really sorry, <laughs> Matt. This welcome. Is, this is a thing. We honour you in Jesus' name. Anyway, so oh. so James, uh, J James, and I have developed a special bond over the last month. Okay. Because James uh, is very fit. <laughs> James is. What has happened? I don't know, but I'm just, I'm trying to get this story out of you. Will you please tell us what this is about? When we bring our guest on, <laughs> yes, right, I'll, I'll what are you going to say? Well, just wait. Because the last time I saw him, <laughs> I said something a bit like this. Oh dear, was it a bit awful? Yeah, it was. It's all right, it wasn't in front of a thousand people. It was no, fine. it wasn't, was it? Okay. It's all good. So, right, sorry. Uh, Folk, so, I'm back to the story. Yeah. At some point, you'll yes. come on and we'll. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, back to the story. Um, James has an Apple Watch, and uh, and I've I've wanted an Apple Watch for a long, long time. And I've told myself if I get an Apple Watch, I will become addicted to exercise. Brilliant. I was like, you know, the one thing, the one thing that's stopping me from running and exercising all the time is I don't have an Apple Watch. That's the one you know thing, these yeah. silly lies that we tell ourselves about the gadgets we really want. And I've asked my wife for a good five or six birthdays and Christmases. Oh for an Apple watch. Oh, this is so and uh, last year, genuinely as a laugh, she wrapped up an Apple. <gasps> and yeah. a watch next to No, it. no, just an <laughs> Apple. And then for my birthday, she got me one of those Casio watches, oh, which was nice. Oh, she's a hoot, I love her. Yeah, and so this year, when it became apparent she was gonna do the same thing again, I, I just basically bought myself an you Apple You went watch. and you just... Uh, so I thought, well, I thought this is, uh, you know, I, this is it, I'm gonna, well, do you know what? what? I have unbelievably become got really into running because you've got an Apple Watch. So it's partly yeah. because on the Apple Watch there's this this app on there that basically every day tells you how how badly you're doing and how you need to get moving all the time. So That's, I've become does so it say keep moving. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's like go for a run, oh. fatty. Oh. <laughs> I've got the really aggressive version. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, got to opt into that. Yeah, one. yeah. Well, I've got, but it tells you. And so and the thing is, you can then buddy up with a friend. Oh and you start to compete with each other. Now this is an insight into the male psyche that we'll unpack later on, I'm sure, with our guest. But 
I have uh, started to become like in this ongoing daily relentless competition with James to make sure that we hit these targets and we and we and so I have been running every day the punchline really it's not a punchline it's not a funny story uh is that um is that I have for the first time in my life been been running every day for the last month and what's amazing to me is how much it's improved my mm. mental health mm-hmm. so I've never really appreciated the relationship between your physical health and your mental health but I'm sleeping better and I, I'm thinking clearer and I like to think I'm wittier and more intelligent as and this podcast fit. but that's great and also nice. fit yeah good on you well I think actually all, we, all we, like we, jokes you don't need to applaud that well done you don't no, need to, I do to applaud no, that well done no, James no, come look, on. you're both producer look everyone fit Matt everyone thanks everyone the context if you don't know is that I've spent a long time as an unfit man so uh, it, it, you know it is a significant thing and I, I am really I'm now becoming because people do this when they've done something mm. for a month I'm becoming a, really an advocate, yeah. an evangelistic for exercise. But it's so, but like, isn't that so good? Because you've done the one thing that often has been the barrier as well, which is actually talking about it. Yeah. Actually saying, yeah. I've noticed the difference. And, and it doesn't matter what age we come to it, being honest enough to say it gives others permission. They, that they can too. Yeah. It's not too late. Like, when you said about the watch, have you seen the film The Two Popes? Not yet. It is brilliant. But the hilarious little thing that runs the whole thing is they both have these Apple Watches. Oh, really? So they're walking around like the Cardinal Palaces and the play- and, and, and Vatican City. Um, and it's beautifully shot, very realistically shot. And, and, and it says, walk more. Don't give up. Keep moving. And it's just really? so, it's a little vignette. Is that all true? The Does the Pope really have an Apple Watch? I don't know, but it's just a lovely moment of both of these, all this massive conversation about the future of the church and who wow. should be the leader of the Catholic Church. But, they, but the thing that unites both of them is they're both unhealthy men, they're older men, yeah. and, they, and they need to exercise more. It's just beautiful. Like me and James. Well, I just like to think, you know, you guys, the future of the church in your hands, and some women as well. So two men, two women. It's got to be equal. But isn't that beautiful? beautiful yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So well, no, good on you. Why don't you? I mean, oh, the other thing I'd say about it is uh, I've decided to because you know I talked about this last year. I, I'm a sucker for New Year's resolutions, mm. and I'm always. Then you beat yourself up, don't you? Yeah, I do them? because I do it for a few weeks Rubbish. and then I Rubbish. I stop. Yeah, but I, I think there's something really good about. Like the impetus of Good. a new year's resolution. Good. So, I have decided this year to do monthly resolutions. Oh, yeah. So on the start of the first of each month, I'm so starting it because you can do something for yes, thirty days. You can. Yes. you can. You can do something for thirty days or twenty eight yes. days or whatever. Um, so at the start of each month, I, I'm doing a new thing. New and so last month it was uh, it was run every day. This month I'm going to eat a hamburger every day. Wonderful. It's yes. all about balance, isn't yeah, it? All about absolutely. bringing everything right back. Wonderful. Well, I'm really good because normally I feel like super protective when you start on the resolutions and I gear myself up like I want to body block all these negative things that you come out with. I'm like, no, Martin, you're awesome and you can do this. So I feel now that I can take that off oh, you. Oh, no, I've, and I've not felt that else. from you today. In fact, I've felt hit on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> can I, can I, without wanting to like, like show myself in a terrible light, can I share a funny story from the retreat? Because you and James were running at retreat, weren't we you? We did, we weren't running at retreat. So I, yeah. I am now definitely one of the oldest women on the Youthscape team. And oh, I think don't say there's that. A certain, there's a certain stage in life where you suddenly notice you're the oldest person in the room quite often. And I've, I've suddenly noticed that, mm. which is great. I'm so pleased about mm. that. But <laughs> there was a moment at the retreat, it was really sunny in January, a beautiful day. And I was like, I'm going to go and sit outside and like contemplate God's creation. I've oh, yeah, got two little kids in my life, I don't get to it. So I went and found a really lovely chair outside. I made a massive thing to everyone. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go and contemplate. I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to gaze at As nature. an extrovert, you had to tell yeah, everybody to there tell everyone. you were going to contemplate. I was going to go be quiet. Sat down, looked out, and suddenly realised that all the women on the team were inside. And all the guys that I am now older than were all out doing sports, running right in front of me. And I was like... I just basically sat watching young men do sport. And there was something like, oh no, I know, I can't, I can't. And then you just came right around the corner. Yeah. I was like, that's it, I've got to go inside. It was so funny. Yeah. It was like I decided to come and sit outside and watch young guys play, which I mean, I, I even as I'm saying it, I'm like, I, I shouldn't really share that story. <laughs> what is that? I was like, no, I can't go inside. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and contemplate God's creation elsewhere. <laughs> I there feel, we go. On one hand, I feel like we should get our guest on. On another <laughs> hand, I feel like it's just fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> and people are going to be tuning in because of who our guest oh, is, who gosh. might not normally be tuning in. Yeah, like I've just his totally, family. His family. 
his yeah. friends. People don't need to hear that, do they? No, they don't. I just sat on a chair, but I thought no. Right. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. Back down, Cougar. <laughs> so. <laughs> I didn't uh, use that word. Uh, so let's get our guest on. So, uh, yes. so our Brilliant. guest today uh, is uh, is Matt Perkins Whoa. from the Salvation Whoa. Army. Come on over. Come join us, Matt. How are we doing? Hello, oh, Matt. You are so Thank welcome. you for having me. You are so welcome. It'd be fair to say that last time we interacted in front of an audience yes it, it went a bit wrong oh man I'm so well, sorry well it didn't go wrong you know it's a bit <laughs> weird <coughs> you said I was extremely good looking which I've, I've, I've stored in the memory bank yeah. oh. on days I'm not feeling oh. great yeah I think of what Martin Saunders so you said to me really on stage. positive with that it was slightly so forward go. Go, I thought <laughs> forward and a bit weird forward yeah <laughs> and I don't uh, you know when you're nervous yeah. sometimes you accidentally flirt with Oh yeah, you do oh. know that. <laughs> that is exactly what exactly you do. What I do. Except I understand that because actually there's a fine balance. Mm. Like I want to be really affirming of my yeah. friends yes. and really positive. And but we do still live in a culture where you, you, some things are left sort of open and a bit hanging. So I think mm. claim it. Matt is an attractive man. That's not the only thing that you're like. That's not why we got Matt on the no, platform. No, Let's also say every human being is attractive. Can yeah. we also put that out there? Every yeah. human being is attractive. On the I inside. actually no, and on the outside, oh, something oh, about yeah. physicality yeah, that, that, that's beautiful. Yeah, so that's we're affirming everything about thank you. you. Thank you. Let's get down to brass tacks. So <laughs> this actually is a very significant week, isn't it? This week is Mental Health and Children's Week. And so it's really great that you've come to join us today because it's a, a week where the whole nation is really focusing on the well-being of our children, particularly around mental mm. health. And that's something that you've been sort of pioneering in Salvation Army for a while, isn't it? Do you want to tell us a little bit about your own story as a youth worker? Like, how have you come into youth ministry and found yourself to be where you are now? Wow, well, yeah, so coming into youth ministry, I think I've grown up within the church and um, I've had some great role models and mentors throughout my life the mm. Christian faith has had an impact on my life Brilliant. Um, but I always felt I was being pulled by the world um, and my mission in life at the age of 18 was actually to make lots of money and mm. live the lifestyle that the world says we should live mm. um, and it wasn't until a guy called Adam Bonner who was a divisional youth specialist within the Salvation Army came to a youth event and said Matt have you ever thought about doing a year out and actually I was supposed to be going to Bradford Management School to do business marketing because that was my key to making money um, and he said look come to Sutton I know you're living in Leeds but move down to London um, there's this thing called the Timothy program this gap year the Salvation Army runs and I know you're into sports and within the community of Sutton I think we could do with some doing some sports ministry so I took a leap of faith and I started a, a sports ministry within this community for about a month we had two kids turn up and then within a few months, we had 20, 30, 40 children wow. turning up every week. Parents were becoming volunteers. The local police were sponsoring us. People were coming to church. Wow. Um, and I just felt I was making an impact in the lives of young people. And I was living out my faith. Mm. Um, and throughout that year, I thought, actually, maybe life's not just about making money. And money's mm. not necessarily what's going to make me happy. But actually working in the lives of young people in particular is something that God's probably calling me to do. Mm. So I, I didn't go back to Bradford to do business marketing. I went on to Oasis and did youth work and theology. Mm. And then the core in Sutton, the church in Sutton, became my home. And that's where I've been a volunteer youth worker ever since. And that was 15 years ago. So you're still there? So I'm still there. And I'm married now with, with two little boys. Um, yeah. Sutton's my, my hometown in Greater London. Um, yeah. So a gap year really did change my life, but also a, a key individual. Yeah, yes. with with an opportunity, and he is Adam and Bonner is a in my life. Adam Bonner is a great individual as well. Mm. Um, so I'm um, I, I actually used to live in Sutton as well myself. Okay, and would have been there about the same time as you. That's just a bit and, strange uh, off the back of yeah <laughs> the comments. <laughs> Yeah, no. we're going to check if he was actually. In yeah, Sutton, I did. Maybe. I lived there. Um, I used to. I didn't have a house. But I would. I would just. I actually just used to live. I just I would live in the bushes outside the so you, church. You knew me back then. Yeah, I did, but I was I oh had a different name. <laughs> Let's not go down that. No, way. no. So um, no, I used to live there, and uh, and I'm and very familiar with the church. And Sutton's a really interesting place because it's uh, it's sort of between it's the buffer zone between sort of Croydon, which yeah. is definitely um, London mm. urban, yes, and then actually the place where I live, Rygate, which is right. which is much more kind of. Uh, suburban even you know you don't have to go very far to get into a rural area actually, yeah you're right rural yeah. Surrey yeah um, so that's quite a unique mm. place yes, to have done is. ministry so why don't we just talk a little bit about Sutton and, and what you've seen among young people mm. there um, you know what's youth ministry been like with those young people what are the challenges what are the opportunities you've seen 
Um, I think challenges there are probably like they are in, in, in most most towns. Um, young people certainly, most recently, a lot of antisocial behaviour on our high mm. street. So mm. Sutton's place with a very long high street on, on a hill. Yes, it's, if you're um, a bit tired, it's a bit hard to walk up. It is. A, there is a little bus shuttle that goes now, actually, Martin. Oh, is there? If you ever come to Sutton, you can use it. Well, now that. I'm so fit, you I don't can need run it. Up. Um, but there's definitely just groups of young people mm. hanging out together. And, and, and from a youth worker's perspective... Mm. They are young people being young people and socialising mm. with each other and mm. just looking for things to do. There's a mm. lot of there's boredom. Mm. Um, and, and youth services have been slashed. Mm. Yeah. Particularly, yeah. I've noticed that within Sutton. Yeah. You know, they haven't got places to go or yeah. places to be. Mm. Um, and McDonald's is a, a point where they, they hang out, particularly mm. outside. They don't want to be in McDonald's. But mm -hmm. the police are being called constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, and young people are just being seen as a problem mm -hmm. to move on rather than an opportunity to work with and engage with and for young people to prosper mm. and actually they could possibly do something positive within mm. the town mm. um but people are fearful i think yeah and, and why because we i'm seeing that something similar as well like an increase in, in young people physically being in spaces again like i think sort of seven or eight years ago you just didn't always see groups of young people around i, mm. I felt and now we're seeing lots more groups of young people around what, what would you say are some of the reasons why that's happening because we, we're told that young people are constantly online they're constantly in their bedroom they're constantly in a different space but if mm. we're seeing them physically nothing to do out and about what what's that telling you about home life yeah, I guess what you're getting out there is possibly home life isn't as safe or mm. a comfortable place that young people need. Mm. Um, and I think young people are doing the video game piece and they mm. are in their houses, mm. but particularly when they leave school, mm. it's on their way home, mm. that's when they can find themselves possibly getting into trouble. And maybe they don't want to go home straight away, they want to just actually just express fun. themselves yeah. or just give off some energy. They've been mm. in lessons all day. Yeah. And it's, it's places like youth clubs or sports clubs that used to be traditionally where they would go. Yeah. Um, and as I'm finding as a parent actually, sports clubs are really expensive. Yeah. Most parents can't afford to, to send their kids to something that's week to week and spending 50 pound a month on just one lesson. Um, and where youth clubs used to fill the gap and hopefully churches can fill the gap more is by engaging young people in some of these activities, physical activities, mm. artistic um, opportunities that actually just engage young people more mm. um, and give them a, a safe place to be and be young people. Mm. Um, so do you still do that, the Sutton Salvation Army Church? Uh, it's called The Core, is it? Yes, the Salvation so, Army do you, Core. Do you still do um, uh, sports ministry there? Uh, we haven't done sports ministry um, for the last year or so. I think, as all churches find, the resources that we lose mm. are the volunteers mm. who are willing to do it. Mm. So for nine years, on a Saturday morning, I got up and led football training. Wow. And a fantastic story. A guy who came to football training as a, like a nine-year-old lad and is now in his early 20s, still comes to court, came through football training. Wow. And in term time, he was sent to a boarding school in Zimbabwe. And... I took him to the gym a few weeks ago just to get alongside this guy and spend time with this bloke. And he said, you know, Matt, why doesn't sports ministry still exist at Sutton? I said, well, it's, it's actually just getting the volunteers. I did mm. that for Saturday mornings for nine years and yeah, now I've got family yeah, and yeah. other things. And he said, but you got paid, right? Oh, and I said, yeah. no, no. It was oh, all voluntary. Wow. Wow. But you and the guys yeah. did that for what reason? Like, what, just for us? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Because yeah. we love you and we want to see you do do well and we wanted to give you something that you wouldn't have necessarily had mm, otherwise yeah. and he said you know what Matt when I was at boarding school it was tough mm. I mean really tough and he mm. didn't go into it but you no. can imagine yeah, yeah. yeah and he said I used to count the days to get home just to come to Saturday morning for oh, wow I love that I love which that which you don't always see the fruits of your labour no. or you don't hear that feedback no. do you but for this young lad who's in his early 20s just that one hour on a Saturday morning oh, I love wow. that. was everything I love that. wow and so I think whether it's sport, whether it's youth clubs, whether it's other activities, if the church can bring some volunteers together, whether it's detached work, mm, just one hour a week, mm, yeah. you'll never know the impact the and the impact. difference you can make mm, on a young mm, person's mm, life mm. with what they're going through now, but also what you're building up in them for later life. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And so, their own service. So that becomes uh, a great way into talking. Uh, Rachel, Rachel mentioned it's Children's Mental Health Week. Um, to talking a little bit about mm. mental health. And particularly today, mm. we're going to talk about boys' mental health. Mm. Uh, but yeah. particularly in the last uh, year, you've been involved in this resource, uh, yes. which we're going to talk about. Um, and uh, this was launched at the National Youth Ministry Weekend. It was, yeah. We had that little embarrassing exchange. We managed yeah. to move past it, and you explained... Yeah. Uh, what it was. So tell us about, uh, why don't we start by you telling us about Upbeat, the Upbeat project. Yep, yeah, so Upbeat is a preventative tool, six session resource um, for 13, 16 year old boys 
which will develop resilience yeah. and hopefully give young boys an emotional literacy mm-hmm. when it comes to their mental health mm. and well-being. Mm. And so I guess as youth workers, you see need and a massively apparent need is the mental health for our young people. And I think particularly boys possibly um, at this time, this was the focus for us. And I think that's because in society, we pen men having to be a certain way. Um, mm. And there's some really unhelpful phrases that get bounded around. Mm. And, you know, man up, real men don't cry. Mm. And actually showing any sort of emotion is seen as a weakness. Yes. Mm. And this has devastating effects in the lives of young men and then into adulthood. Yeah. So some of the statistics are just terrifying. Mm. So mm. for the ages of 20 to 34 young people, the biggest killer mm. of that age group is suicide. Mm. In the past 25 years, there's been a 70% rise in cases of anxiety and depression. Mm. Three times more men than women commit suicide. And the wow. biggest killer of men under the age of 50 is suicide. Yeah. Mm. So I don't know about you, but when it comes to our physical <clears throat> health, we're very clued up with what's wrong wrong, or mm. what's bad for us. Mm. So I know smoking, drinking has mm. devastating effects on my body. I know eating badly yeah. does. Yeah. But mental health is, is mm. then, you can't separate physical and mental health. Mm. But we don't know so much about mental health and health and well-being and how it affects mm. our lives. Mm. And young men are mm. being deprived from being able to express themselves because it's a taboo subject, mm. because yeah. they're afraid that they don't seem or come across as real men if they mm. if they do that yeah um, and i just want to sort of amplify that a little bit mm-hmm. uh because uh we might think that's one of those things that people say mm. you know boys don't talk about their mental health uh you know boys don't talk about their emotions it's sort of one of those phrases we hear so much that we've slightly become uh inoculated against the truth yeah. of it yeah but the reality is like if you sit down with a group of teenage lads as i have over the last year and i've asked them this question over and over again mm. because i want to know if it's true like if it's really true can you do you feel like you can talk about your feelings mm. uh you know is that something you can discuss in front of your mates over and again they're like no way no way. we yeah. can't talk about our our emotions, yeah. our feelings, we can't show weakness. Mm-hmm. They feel as much pressure on, on um, social media to look a certain way, to get the perfect selfie. Yeah. That is just as much a male issue as a female issue. Yes. Of only posting positive pictures of your life online, that yeah. is just as much a male mm-hmm. issue and a female issue. It's mm-hmm. absolutely what's going on with our young people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not just a thing we say. Mm-hmm. So this is really, really important. Really important. And it'll resonate with everybody listening, I'm sure. It's interesting about this suicide because I, I just get heartbroken about that, and I and I, I can't corroborate this, so I might not be correct. But somebody recently said a similar number of males and females will attempt suicide, mm. but males are way more successful at killing themselves. Right. So it's almost like that violence that is kind of groomed within them means that not only are young men and all men finding it hard to talk about emotions, but mm. actually it's twinned with mm. actually it's an, an increased violence against themselves, and mm. then that can sadly spill over to violence against others. Well, I think it, it makes more sense, yeah. uh, you know, again... I'm not an expert in mental health. Yeah. I mean, none of us are no. mental health yeah. professionals. Yeah. 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 Um, but, but if girls who have those suicidal thoughts do at least have some outlets mm. to talk about their emotions, yes. they're accepted, they are able to yes. let off yeah. a bit of steam, yeah. Yeah. Society even as, yeah. as the steam yeah. is yeah. building yeah. up. Yeah. 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 So when you get to that awful point where it gets too much, you know, as a boy, you are absolutely ploughing headlong into that with no sense of any release. Mm. Yeah. Everything is still bottled up inside. Mm. Yeah. And I think, I think that sadly is one of the reasons why guys are more successful ultimately yeah yeah so it's, it's children's mental health week and I, I we're a podcast talking about young people but i think mm. increasingly we're seeing aren't we that lots of the patterns of behavior and the entrenched gender stereotypes that, that are so toxic for young men by the time they become teenagers it begins in childhood and all of us mm. here are parents of, of children little ones and you haven't got to be a parent of a child to know the impact on children but even at such a young age we see the kind of the well he, boys do this and girls do this and we, we young people are in tracks right from very young ages aren't yep. they yeah, so this yeah. has to begin before young people get to youth group it has to be in children's ministry too yeah. doesn't it as mm-hmm. well but massively so in youth ministry and i guess lots of youth workers are realizing they're inheriting a group of young people who yeah absolutely need some very basic skills and permission mm. so i'm a female youth worker i've got a group of young people in my group mostly males 
is this a resource that I could use too? Or are you thinking actually there's something about that shared experience of, of being a guy in, in today's culture that means actually this sort of resource is better in the hands of... I don't want to kind of mm, good question. unhelpfully say, that, you know, but I, I recognise that my lived experience is different to the boys that yeah, I work with. Yeah, absolutely. I think this resource is meeting a need in terms of men don't necessarily have as many outlets for talking about their mental health as maybe women have or maybe feel like they can't. And then what this does is it, it's based very much around music. And I think music is universal. Yeah. And mm. music has the power to help us express ourselves. It yeah. takes us back to good times. Mm. It, it helps challenge us. Mm. Um, and the other thing about music is everyone loves music. It might differ in what we like in, in terms mm. of genre. Mm. But it's something that will bring people together. Mm. Mm. And so what this very cleverly does, it goes through six sessions. So sessions such as what does it mean to be a man? the importance of strong friendships, building resilience. Mm -hmm. um, and it brings men together and gives them a safe environment for them to talk about that, but through music, which mm -hmm. is they may be mm -hmm. more accustomed to. Um, and we've got some fantastic artists. So it's music terminology. There's there's an intro, which is an icebreaker. I should just show people, by the way, mm -hmm. that, that it is beautifully, it's designed it's like a record. Like, like a record, mm -hmm. which is actually you might think that's not culturally relevant but vinyl was had a massive renaissance hasn't it so yeah absolutely. actually this is beautifully it's beautifully designed but i love the fact that you've even taken the music thing into the design of the, yeah, of the way yeah. it looks as well cool. yeah anyway, carry on so intros icebreakers with young people which hopefully instantly gets them comfortable um and then we've got the verse which is like the real meat of the conversation to try and meet learning objectives but what's great about this is when we come to the solo there's some, been some brilliant videos made so on one of each of these six sessions you'll watch a video and we're talking people like Governor B yeah. Radzi the Blue Peter presenter Radzi from Blue yeah. Peter and that's Josh a proper Luke celebrity Smith. Josh yeah. Luke Smith yeah Smith. Harry Baker the poet yeah. Yeah. Um, Steph McLeod and that's a whole range of guys like this is not all kind of alpha male guys no, is it? there's a, a poet whole range. Some musicians yeah. a whole range yeah. Yeah. that young so people good. will either relate to or so be inspired good. by but these artists talk about their own mental health journey and they talk about a track that's yeah. helped them through something yeah. mm. and I think with so many resources that we have in youth work you'll meet once a week for an hour and it's isolated in that hour and then yeah. they go about the rest of their week yeah we wanted there to be a creative element within this mm. resource that when mm. we send young people out for the week they do something that they're all doing and they're expressing their feelings in some way mm. so these artists give a six track playlist which is on okay. Spotify and young people get to listen to the music and then when they come back the week after, they express actually, what did the music say to mm, you this week? How did good. it help you overcome Hysteria the stress of an exam? How did it motivate you to play football on a Saturday afternoon? Nice. And just how music intertwines yeah. with our mental health That's and awesome. well-being. And then the youth group actually put their own playlist mm. together. So when you leave that six sessions, these young people have got the playlist that they've created together. Mm. Um, that's amazing. That's so, so, and Spotify, Spotify, so Spotify is free, isn't it? So uh, people might hear, you know, old Spotify playlists and think, oh, that sounds a bit, no, that sounds a bit complicated. It's free and, it's and really easy fun. enough to sort of engage with all. Absolutely. That so the great thing about this resource, if you want the leader's guide, you go to Escape and you pay twenty pound. You do yes. need the leader's guide, really. But if you want to go to SalvationArmy.org.uk mm. forward slash upbeat, you can get all the playlists there, all the activities and you can watch every video. Mm. And the great thing about this resource is that it's done in such a way that if you've only got 15 minutes, you could watch a video and some, some questions. Yeah. But if you've got the full amount of time, yeah, you've got an hour and a half, you can do the whole stuff, you can do the whole thing. That's amazing, and so good. I mean, I, I, you can tell I love this resource. Yes. You do. What's unique about this resource is it's all faiths and none. Mm. So this can be used in your church youth yeah. group, but it can be used in, in your school, schools. With Schools Mental yeah. Health Week, let's not think this is yeah. for existing youth groups. This is yeah. an opportunity to start new youth groups, yeah. to go into a school and say, look, this resource stands up because it's been used and yeah. worked together with mental health care professionals and youth workers to deliver yeah. with young boys. Um, and so we really believe in it. Yeah. But if you go to the, the bridge, Mm -hmm. the music terminology again that is the Jesus wisdom that mm. is the faith element yeah so you can use that in appropriate spaces within church yeah yeah but actually if it's not so appropriate to use it within school or you can change it you, you change it yeah. you adapt it Brilliant. or you just make necessarily leave it out it's great it is Ma really great I, I want to ask you a question Martin, yeah. because I think sat around the table as well as Matt who's really spearheaded this resource you, you your book that you've written really is speaking into this area mm. and as Matt read 
like what what is being talked about here the, the first thing you said was one of the sessions is what does it mean to be a man and immediately yeah. I was like oh man that's a toxic question like yeah. that is such a difficult one yeah. mm. and just as what does it mean to be a woman it did this it, the polit- kind of the the political conversation around it, all the issues around supporting vulnerable young people, questioning their gender and all the rest of it. How How is this resource aiding that conversation that doesn't end up in kind of patriarchy and the mm. narrow stereotypes? Because sometimes we can hear, can't we, well, what it means to be a man is to help men to know that they are leaders and to kind yeah. of reassert their kind of God-given authority and blah, 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 blah. I think lots of people just, their, their, their alarm bells are going, ah, what yeah, does it be a yeah, man? That's yeah. where they're heading with that. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you like speak into that space? Because we've got to answer that, haven't we? Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is, this. I think this resource is really good at disarming some of those stereotypes. So right on the... I mean, it's beautifully designed. There's some great graphic design here by Malky Curry, yeah. who I will name check because he's, a, he's, he's done a fabulous awesome. job with it. Yeah. Um, uh, but like right here on the cover, there's this kind of uh, uh, gangster geezer guy uh, with a man up next to him. You know, there's a real mm. kind of male stereotype mm. there. But he's crying. Um, uh, is he? Yeah, he's, he's crying. crying. He's crying. Shed, a tear. Yeah. And he's crying. Um, and then you've got this this guy kind of listening to music in the center of the of the picture here who who maybe looks much less um, yeah. like a sort of classic yeah. you know um, uh, archetype man yes. um, and and I think the, the the resource does a really good job of sort of challenging and getting kids to think about um, what's good and what's bad about some of those gender stereotypes remember boys have been have been growing up in a very complicated mm. world in terms of gender in the last 15 mm. 20 years mm. so yeah. it used to be really clear it used to be um you know you were you were either the sort of classic alpha male mm-hmm. real man yeah or you or you weren't a real man yeah and that they were you were a sissy or or, or some other um derogatory term mm. um and then in the last few years, as the, the ideas of toxic masculinity have come up around, it's not really okay, even if you, if you are mm, that kind of guy who, who yeah. just is quite assertive and maybe does like football, mm. curry, you mm. know, obviously after 18, likes mm. beer, mm. you know, all that sort of stuff. That, mm. that has almost become demonized, mm. which is also unhelpful. Mm. I think probably that the, one of the most helpful starting points is to... Is to try to say to, to, to men that, you know, the person that you are, the unique person that you are, it's okay to be that person. Mm. That is a legitimate expression of masculinity. As long as you're not toxic, as long as you're mm. not hurting people, as long as you're not asserting yourself over, over other people in an unhelpful way, it's okay to be, I have a friend, I've mentioned him a few times, I have a friend who really likes Disney movies mm. and he's in his early 20s and actually he's been made to feel like he's not a real man mm. because he loves Beauty and the Beast. Mm. What? Yeah, now, where yeah, did we get yeah, that absolutely. idea from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when we started to say, look, it's okay who you are, I think the, the really cool thing for um, for us as Christian youth leaders is we have the most incredible mm. role model yeah. of masculinity mm. to point to. Yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. he is also yeah. a great role model for women yes, as well. Yes, he is. Mm. Yes. But for, yeah. for young men in, an, in a, a world of identity crisis, mm. Jesus is this unbelievable, mm. brilliant, mm. emotional, strong, sensitive, mm. friend, mm. role model. Um, and so I think it's, you know, that's the mm. conversation that, that we need to have with kids. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I think just the message to, to all our tribe, isn't it? However we are engaging, whoever the young people are that we are engaging with, let's not be silent in this conversation. Let's mm. make sure we're opening up lots of spaces for our young people to explore gender, mm. to know that they are very safe however they're approaching this, but that we don't ignore conversations mm. around mm. masculinity, mm. femininity, boy, girl. And we can feel very nervous about it and unsure and we don't want to add stereotypes and we don't want to make young people feel excluded from that but I think actually creating safe spaces where young people know well today we're going to be thinking about well-being and what does that and what are some of the barriers to that for boys and to girls you can use this resource if actually the setting that you're in it feels a little bit more challenging you want to make sure all voices are heard then then get grab hold of this resource and just use it as a way of helping you explore a little bit what might be some of the guys in your youth what might they be experiencing and and often I think the young people that in my experience are often struggling them not the most we're not going to hire give our young people a hierarchy but i'm often not very good at picking up on those that might not be saying i'm mm, struggling they mm, might look like mm. they've got it all together and i guess that's one of the challenges for young guys mm. to not look like you're struggling yeah. so actually we need to maybe work a little bit harder 
to mm. understand mm. what the, what the boy is dealing with who might not be looking like they're presenting yeah. with any particular struggles yeah, right. but you're telling me actually behind the scenes there's a seething mass of you know stuff happening mm, a ticking absolutely. time bomb yeah. so let's look out for them too it's awesome yeah and i think it's giving an outlet for those young people so in my experience of 15 16 years of youth work and working with groups actually it's it's when you get into a mentoring relationship where actually that is the safe place where young people Excellent. then feel that they can talk. Yes. So in terms of basic youth work, and we talk, talk of tools of engagement, we think of the pool table. Mm. I'm the youth worker and know that pool table comes second, talking is the main thing. Mm. We almost hoodwink young people into a sense of actually, they know that they think pool's the main thing and talking mm. second. Mm. We need to almost come together and both be in the knowledge that talking is the main thing. Mm. And actually you think to yourself, when was the last time, particularly men, you sat in a coffee shop facing each other in the eye and spoke for an hour. Now, I know some of our, listen, our youth, with our listeners mm. are youth workers and they probably do that daily. But in terms of outside of work and mm. then with young people, mm. are we building trust mm. with young people one on one? And we do that and build trust by possibly appropriately showing some vulnerability, but also giving mm. our time mm. and listening. Mm. And in my experience, two, three times down the line mm. of mentoring, that is when a young person feels comfortable mm. to talk about some of the deepest mm. things that they're grappling with. Mm. And I'm not being funny, they're not gonna talk about those things whilst they pop the black ball. No. They're gonna talk about those things when they're with someone they trust, one-on-one, -on -one, mm. and you take them outside of the group. But I think there's a lesson learned for everyone there. Actually, mm. when we socialize men and probably women, I do it playing golf with a group or football mm. with a group. When do I actually take a friend mm. and just say, how are you doing? and yeah. speak openly and deeply yeah one-on-one -on -one, mm. eye to eye for an hour or playing chess because sometimes eye to eye is hard isn't it like yes flat yeah, yeah. heart to heart doesn't have to be face to face it can no. be sat next to each other yeah some of the best conversations are in the car aren't they you're right so i think you're absolutely right it's yeah, yeah. so important that, yeah. that for some people that is difficult yeah. i've got a little little boy in my life who's two years old and I, one thing that has just moved me beyond anything when I was in London and come up to Preston, is the number of teenage boys that having a little toddler, they like they're nurturing like this beautiful mm. nurture in the heart of these teenage boys mm. comes out when they see my son. So yeah. A couple of lads at Preston Minster who um, struggle to engage with group discussion. I bring my little son along, and they are just amazing. Yeah. It's just like, whoa, there's something. And I, mm. I heard a psychologist once talk about the lizard brain, that kind of <laughs> fight or flight lizard brain. You know, a young yes. person's eyes go hard. Yeah, yeah. You're like they've gone into lizard if they're going to fight or flight. Um, and and she said. One of the things that gets us out of that immediately is the face of a baby. So I'm not saying take a, huh. take, take a photo of a baby around, but I was almost like, why is it when I take my little kids to do detached, some mm. of these strapping lads that are giving me the hard eye, like right now, yeah. suddenly change when, when yeah. they see my little toddler. Wow. It, That's it, interesting. It, it set, turns yeah. into a completely different space. So I think, yeah. I think making sure that we open up our homes to, to the lads, I think mm. I'll get the girls around, you know, but actually boys really benefit yeah. from that home environment where there's all ages around, yeah. isn't there? Yeah, Love absolutely. it. Matt, you yeah. are such a good challenge. You brought such a good challenge to us today. Thank mm. you. Thank you. No, thanks it's for having awesome. me. It's awesome. It's awesome. So, you can get hold of the Youthcake website. Yes. So you can hold of your books. It's Martin's books are bringing in this as well. You can also get that if you want. Uh, okay. On the Youthscape store uh, for £20, uh, you get the upbeat leader's guide. So good. Looks and feels beautiful. There's a lad in a wheelchair. Great. There's a boy in a wheelchair there that picture oh. so it's such You're, a good cover there's a lot of detail a there. lot of detail mm. uh, you've got uh, the all the kind of sessions in here and then uh, online mm -hmm. you've then got access to all the video that's right uh, resources as well so yeah. uh, a great investment and I loved what you said about it being potentially a way that you could go to a school mm. and it, it might be a, a, a really you know it looks it looks like a professional resource <laughs> it, it is a professional it, it is a resource. professional <laughs> resource um, and actually it's something you can take into a school and say we We'd like to run this yeah. course with uh, use it. with young men, and it's it says uh, it's for ages thirteen to sixteen. Um, I think it's good to be a bit specific on, on yeah. ages, but we feel like that's the right age range. Mm. We think so. I mean, twelve to eighteen. I'm sure mm. it's not going to cause any issues, but mm. that would be specifically no. what we're targeting yeah. with this resource. Okay. So I know that you guys put an enormous amount of mm. energy and uh and and time and money into making this the resource that is mm. so well done and uh, if you haven't seen it yet uh youthscape.co.uk slash store you can find upbeat and all the information about it there and we're going to talk about something before yes, we finish aren't before we before we finish there's a little ask that i have um so uh as many of you know romance academy we've kind of shelved it and said listen babes 
you were a beaut you were awesome and i and we totally stand behind the messages and values of romance academy but feel that something new needs to grow um and in the space that that's created for us we're doing a bit of research a bit of listening and one of our projects at the moment is listening to youth workers church leaders anybody who's involved in mentoring and working with young people to ask you questions about what do you see as the church's engagement with young people currently on the topic of sex so there's an online survey that you could do it's on my facebook page we're just doing a little bit more like that because there's lots of other stuff on the youthscape research so the youthscape team have put it on my facebook page so rachel gardner and there's 10 questions it's anonymous um but your answers will directly help me shape kind of the next part of of the of the uh, research that we're doing and and what might come out of it so i would love you to take part about 500 people have so far which is amazing i'd love it to be a thousand that would give us a really good sample um so what how is the church engaging with young people on the topic of sex i would love to hear your thoughts and we'll share that again on youthscape's social media this week uh if you for some reason don't want to look up rachel gardner <laughs> On uh, maybe, you know, your wife uses the same computer as you. You think, I don't want to have that in my search history. (laughs) Understandable. It's just me and my crazy sunglasses, that's all. So uh, that's it for another edition of the Youthscape podcast. Uh, Thanks for joining us. And we will be with you again in video in a little while. And we'll be back uh, online in audio form next week. The Youthscape podcast. The Youthscape podcast.